Hey guys, Andrew with CPR Instructor Affiliates powered by Prime Medical Training. Today we're going to help you figure out what classes you need to be offering, what's going to give you the best bang for your buck, and how to choose from a completely objective, financial, good business sense standpoint, what classes need to be in your what we call product portfolio and which ones shouldn't be. But before we get into it today, if you would, please go ahead and subscribe below so that you can stay up to date with all the videos that we put out on how to grow and build successful CPR companies. Also, you can hit the little bell icon down there and it will notify you when we put out new videos as well. So, a lot of classes out there. The bread and butter main class that people teach and offer is CPR. Right, I mean, a lot of people have that in their name, their, you know, Acme CPR company, and that is what they offer, what they do, and that's as it should be, because CPR is going to be the most popular class in this kind of um, industry uh, and product offerings that you can be giving out. So definitely make sure that CPR is there. Um, that's a, should be a no-brainer. First aid falls in that. Uh, ACLS, PALS, those classes can also fall under kind of the core courses that you should be offering. Now, ACLS and PALS, there's a couple things that you need to consider with that though. One is, do you have the, the means to teach it? And what I mean by that is not everybody can be an ACLS and PALS instructor. If you don't have any medical background whatsoever, uh, you will not be qualified to teach an ACLS and PALS course. Uh, even if you do have a medical background, you're technically supposed to uh, have the scope of practice of what is taught in PALS and ACLS. So in your licensure level, whatever that is, you should be able to innovate, to use um, easy IOs, to do drug administration. Uh, if those things are not things that you're allowed to do in your licensure level, then you really aren't supposed to be teaching those classes. And, um, and then the other thing too is the cost of equipment. So there's a whole cost to getting CPR um, equipment and first aid equipment. And then there's an additional cost to get all of the ACLS and PALS equipment. The airway heads, the, um, the EKG monitor, the, the drugs, all of that kind of stuff. Um, is an additional cost. So when you're trying to figure out what you should offer and what you shouldn't, um, you know you need to consider, can you even afford to go and invest in that additional, uh, those additional pieces of equipment? Um, I'm not saying that you should never do ACLS and PALS, but um, you may want to consider doing the CPR and first aid only. And then over the course of, let's say, a year, once you've built up some money, you can then start offering ACLS and PALS. If you've been in business for a while, then I highly encourage you to do ACLS and PALS. There's a lot of great synergy and complementing that happens between a CPR class and an ACLS and PALS class. What we've commonly seen happen is where a dentist will come to us and uh, he'll take ACLS and he likes the training that he got and he likes the company and the experience. So then he refers his entire dental practice to come to us for the CPR. Uh, and same vice versa, you know, you can have uh, somebody who comes for just a CPR class, but then um, later on down the road, maybe they, they came as a nursing student, they only needed CPR, but then later on down the road, they need their ACLS and PALS too for whatever job they ended up getting. And so then they come back to you or they refer you to their other uh, colleagues or friends who might need ACLS and PALS. So being able to offer all three classes is very beneficial. Um, now, you know, there's the expense piece that can be a hurdle. The other hurdle is if you're not qualified to teach the class, that can be a challenge too. Um, the main way to go about handling that is just to hire other people who already are ACLS and PALS instructors um, and, uh, and just have them work for you and you pay them to teach those classes. But don't let those things be immediate hurdles. Uh, it may be something that, that puts pause on you offering ACLS and PALS, but later on down the road um, and long term, you really need to have that on your roadmap of products that you're going to offer. 
Other products that you can be offering that are great ideas are going to be your bloodborne pathogens, your um, oxygen administration. Those are not as common of a class as even ACLs and PALs, but they are still needed. So especially if you go into the industrial arena, uh, they're going to want CPR, first aid, bloodborne pathogens, and possibly oxygen administration. Those are easy classes that you can teach. They really don't even re require a whole lot of teaching. It's almost 100% video based. And, uh, and so you play that, you answer some questions, you ask some questions, and, uh, and then people are certified. Simple courses, uh, then there's gonna be a high margin uh, on profit margin on those because of the simplicity of them and how cheap they are to administer the course and to pay somebody to teach it. Now, outside of those, what I would consider core courses, there are other options out there for you to teach. So commonly, CPR businesses will often dabble in babysitting classes, pet CPR, wilderness medicine classes, and, uh, and they might even uh, have some other courses that they try to get involved with. The danger with getting involved with these other supplemental courses is um, really two or threefold. So first of all, there's the added expense, right? Every time you add a new class, um, there is time and money that goes into you learning the course and, and developing it, you training other instructors to be able to teach it, um, taking time to put it on your website and try to um, optimize that, that page so that it ranks in Google for when people are searching it. All these things, every time you add a new class, um, there's gonna be an additional cost. And so you have to try to figure out, is that cost um, going to be made up in the revenue that you generate. Uh, now, generally speaking, it's not. Uh, for pet CPR, for babysitting classes, um, even wilderness first aid, those are uh, very niche classes and that don't have a huge target market. Uh, you'll see certainly CPR businesses running them, but if you really look at the numbers, uh, the numbers don't make a whole lot of sense. Even if you were at break even or made a marginal amount of money, how much time are you having to invest in that? And are you even doing it really well? Uh, that's another key is you wanna make sure that whatever product you put out there, that you do it well. And if you only teach that class once every four months because there's not a huge demand, uh, surely you're not going to be as good and as comfortable teaching that class as you would a CPR class that you're doing on a weekly basis. And so when somebody comes um, to take the class, either one, you had to spend an inordinate amount of time preparing for it uh, for a class that doesn't even make you that much money, um, and, or you teach the class and because you're not that great at it and you don't have as much practice and comfortability with it, um, you don't give a great experience to your students. And then the students leave saying, man, that company really isn't that great. When in reality, you are great. You offer a phenomenal CPR class. It's just your babysitting class isn't that great. But they don't know that. They just kind of generalize and say your whole company wasn't an excellent experience. And so that can actually hurt your reputation. So those are some things to consider. You so see your time, your money, and your reputation. Um, other things that you need to be really careful about doing uh, is adding services that are completely unrelated to the health and safety industry. So some of the things that I've seen before are uh, notary services, people trying to advertise a notary service, or, um, you know, I've, I've even seen like tattoo parlors, uh, people trying to use their building and have like a dual business going on. Um, some people get into... Uh, you know, selling scrubs or other products that really don't have a whole lot to do with CPR. Um, you might try to stretch it and say, well, the people coming to me for CPR would also a lot of times be interested in buying scrubs or getting things notarized, but it, it's a stretch. 
Um, you're a training company, not a uh, notary service, not a retail store. And so you really need to focus on the training piece of things, especially if you're small or just beginning. Um, adding on more products like we've already talked about costs money, time, and can potentially cost your reputation. So if you do end up adding these supplemental services, you really should be adding them on later on down the road when you've really built up a, a good base with your core classes and you have enough revenue that you can afford to blow that revenue on, um, on, on equipment, on training, um, on, on you know, marketing, all these things. So be careful about that. And then, and then second of all too, uh, the more products that you have, the more services that you try to offer, the more difficult it is for your voice to stand out. So now instead of just trying to be the CPR company and just really killing it with marketing and everything you put out is about CPR, now you've your Acme CPR company and your Facebook page, you're constantly hitting people up with like things about CPR and things about scrubs and notary service and you're going to confuse your your target market because they don't really know exactly what you do or exactly what you're good at and nowadays people really look for companies that are specialized in particular areas and when you try to be everything to everybody um, you're going to have a hard time attracting anybody so um, that can also hurt you a lot and uh, and and it can be a, a time waste for you and and it can be a distraction or a turn off for potential clients so make sure that um, whatever you do that you can be strong in your marketing voice and that it's easy for people to understand even if you have multiple things it's easy for them to understand exactly what it is that you do so cpr acls and pals even though that's multiple products and you can add in first aid and bloodborne pathogens that's all really easy like if somebody said well what do you do i you say well we teach cpr advanced cardiac courses bloodborne pathogens and people are like ah got it i know uh, what they do and if you start saying like well you know we do a little bit of everything we we sell scrubs we teach CPR we have a notary service we um, also have this cleaning business that we have on the side people are like so exactly what is it that you do and, and are you good at um, and, and it's going to work against you so please make sure to really funnel and focus your time and efforts and only start to expand when you feel like you've really maxed out one product or service um, and that you have the, the, the time, the money, and to pursue other avenues. You know, just CPR alone, without ACLS, PALS, uh, bloodborne pathogens, any of that, CPR alone, the market is so huge, it would take you years before you cap out on that. So even, even in ACLS and PALS, adding those things in can be a bit of a distraction, but, but you can justify it because there's enough synergy that and the classes complement each other. But, um, but yeah, CPR by itself is going to keep you plenty busy if you work it right and if you leverage that and really work that just that vertical hard. Um, so make sure you take that into consideration um, and, and keep it simple keep it focused on a very limited uh, products and services you know and there's a reason why too if you look at like these larger companies uh, why they only are offering CPR ACLS and PALS why are the big companies uh, in the CPR world why are they not offering pet CPR why are they not offering babysitting why are they not offering notary services or whatever else you can think of it's because it's not worth their time it's not worth the money and if you really care about growing a business that's successful and uh, making an impact in your community even then you need to focus because uh, if you don't you can't make an impact uh, if you're distracted and and if you're Funds are limited because they're just being spread out across all these products and services. Focus, double down on what the core products are, and you're going to do really well. 
If you have questions, if you got comments or thoughts about this, I would love to hear it if you can leave it in the comments section below. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that, uh, that, that uh, bell notification so you get notifications about when we're posting our next videos. And we will talk to you again soon.